Welcome, everybody. Now, uh, welcome to uh, another of our pre-talks to the Knowledge Festival coming up 16th to 22nd of August uh, with many experts from different uh, branches of medicine from all around the world coming together to talk about optimizing the immune system. And today we have a great guest for you, Dr. Uh, Shri Harisukesh, uh, who is a well-established yoga therapy professional, presently working as teaching faculty in the Department of Yoga Studies, Central University of Kerala. Um, and uh, he's done post-graduation in yoga uh, in uh, the Mangalore University, and uh, then done uh, the PhD under the guidance of Dr. Krishna Sharma uh, in the same department. So the area for the research was impact of yoga therapy and degenerative lumbar disc disorder and antioxidant status. He has published various research art articles in the national, in, in national and uh, international journals and also uh, he has a, a written a book, uh, Yoga Sana Samahara, which is the compilation of 72 ancient asanas, yoga asanas, and um, the reference to it. So Dr. Shri Harisukesh is uh, also trained in the Vedas and um, in the Veda and Tantra satana. Um, by following the uh, Gurukula system. So now today we're very happy to have him on and uh, have him talk about yoga, yoga therapy, and uh, how it probably can um, help a lot uh, with your immune system. So doctor, thank you for being here. I pass it over to you. Uh, sorry, you have to unmute. Um, sorry. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Western Series, uh, for the in introduction. And uh, today is Guru Purnima, so we will start the session by saluting our gurus. Vande Guru Nam Charana Ravinde Sundar Shidaswatma Sukhava Bodhe. Nishreya se jangalikaya mane samsara hala hala mohashantyai. Good evening, all of you. Uh, you know, uh, the immunity, the concept of immunity nowadays, everybody is discussing because of particularly because of this pandemic situation everybody is seeking how we can improve our immunity and uh, how we can prevent this pandemic or other diseases so seeking solutions therefore it is very much uh, significant uh, to understand uh, about what is immunity and how we can improve the immunity so that we can prevent various uh, diseases also we can increase or improve the quality of life so that is why today we are discussing yoga and immunity how we can improve the immunity through or by following yoga okay so objectives of the today's discussions or main point which i am going to cover in today's discussion is that so first, we have to understand the uh, uh, not in detail, but in briefly, we have to understand what is immunity. We should have basic concept, and after that, this um, if we don't have sufficient immunity, what are the complications? General complication we have to face because of this immunodeficiency, and we have to strategize how we can 
improve the immunity what should be the strategy to improve the immunity and particularly i am uh, from the field of yoga uh, how we can improve the immunity by following yogic techniques these are the uh, points i am uh, uh, wish to uh, share with all of you today okay so first of all we have to understand what is immunity you know uh, everybody is uh, discussing yes uh, I, I i i have immunity or i don't have much immunity i want to improve my immunity so what is immunity so if generally it says the immunity is the capacity of the body or multicellular organisms to resist harmful microorganisms which means for example we are exposed constantly exposed in the external environment so that so many microorganisms like bacteria virus etc uh, it will keep uh, constantly it is entering in our body through our food as well as in the breath or through the skin so many situations are there okay so our body has the natural capacity to fight fight against this kind of um, uh, harmful microorganisms in our body there are uh, useful uh, like bacteria etc which is helpful to our digestive mechanism also presents but those who are uh, those the microorganisms which is harmful body will fight against that so this is the uh, general mechanism of immunity so this is uh, in two types that is innate immunity and the second one is adaptive immunity innate immunity is uh, is uh, like uh, by birth itself our body will get uh, what we can say the ability to resist uh, whenever a microorganism enter in our body our body immediately will start to fight against that microbes so that immediately our wbc count will be increased uh, according to the requirement and the threat will be eliminated so that is the normal situations and also suppose we got a wound so that it has to be healed so immediately the uh, related hormones and wbc and so many chain reactions will happen and the problem will be solved so that is uh, we have to understand uh, that is the method of innate immunity especially about adaptive immunity like it is the immunity that occurs after an exposure to particular antigen for example now in this situation this covid pandemic we it is new virus so our body doesn't remember whether how to fight against this uh, particular virus so uh, what happens when we got exposed our body will start to fight and our body will create antibodies so that this uh, uh, threat can be eliminated so once this is over then our body will remember or oh, this is the microbes so that how to the body will accustomed how to fight this particular microbes so based on that this adaptive immunity works so this is the two main classifications of immunity that is innate immunity and adaptive immunity okay now what is uh, in usual stage in day even though there is no diseases but what is happening in our body so our body is for example if suppose we are going outside a dusty area so many microbes are there a polluted area we are going so so many microbes are there so it will attack our body but we are not aware about that when once the microorganisms enters in our body or uh, like the toxic toxic elements or microorganisms enters in our body 
then immediately body will start to fight against that to eliminate that threat so what happens as part of that uh, body will constantly produce increase the uh, rate of wbc like monocytes lymphocytes okay so many wbc differential uh, different types of wbcs are there so it, it will increase the uh, number of wbc based on the requirement in feedback mechanism feedback mechanism means once the microorganism enters in our body then immediately it will start to signal uh, to produce uh, the WBC to increase the WBC count so bone marrow will generate accelerate the mechanism of WBC productions so that uh, like uh, allotting number large numbers so warriors in problem at uh, this affected area so that problem can be solved same mechanism in body also adults so WBC count will increase and it will destroy or eliminate uh, this uh, uh, microorganisms so that that threat will be managed. So once the purpose of this particular WBC uh, over, then uh, then body will not maintain the large number of WBC because it has some other complications so that the another method it is called apoptosis is uh, progressive cell death uh, naturally wbc the body itself will destroy the excessive number of wbc so that mechanism is called apoptosis is uh, uh, the progressive cell cellular death so that because of that the number the count of the wbc will be maintained properly in our body so main organs which related to immune system is like bone marrow which producing this WBC um, this uh, blood cells and thymus gland lymph nodes so many lymph nodes are there in our body and spleen is the uh, organ one of the important organs like tonsils which presented in our throat region and uh, etc and mucous membrane also uh, playing a significant role to fight against uh, this uh, microorganisms. Suppose when we are uh, inhaling some dust, immediately our nose will produce excessive mucous membrane so that this uh, the ele which element, which threat, creating threat that can be eliminated. So this is the natural normal state in our body so this we have to be very clear what is immunity and what is happening in the normal situations and uh, what is uh, in other condition where immunodeficiency is uh, happened so there are uh, multiple conditions we can observe where immunity is uh, become less or as the complications of immunodeficiency so it is classified mainly classified into four levels like primary immunodeficiency disorders secondary immunodeficiency disorders and another other thing is like allergies and asthma and the fourth classification is autoimmune disorders so uh, for example in by birth some people uh, the possibility of missing some particular element in the immune system so because of that there is a possibility of getting some kind of diseases so it is uh, similar like genetic uh, disorders okay so that is coming under this primary primary immunodeficiency disorders and uh, the secondary thing is like uh, what happens the another uh, external elements because of the uh what what happening the external interference our body will lose the eff uh, efficiency immunity so that the ability to prevent or fight against such diseases will happen that condition is coming under 
secondary immunodeficiency disorders. For example, like during the cancer treatment, when we are uh, doing the chemotherapy, the entire body, it will affect our entire body system. So that time, this immunity will be a little bit decreased. And also because of this uh, uh, HIV virus, our body will be affected because of that. And because of that, immunity uh, will be affected. And also because of uh, severe malnutrition, uh, because of that, our ability uh, to fight against the microorganism is also happened. So that is, these are the, some of the examples for secondary immunodeficiency disorders. And the third one is like allergies and asthma, which is happening because of the uh, exposure to uh, some kind of uh, uh, like microorganisms. So that body will immediately react and uh, that condition, uh, and it will take little time to fight to establish the homeostasis in the body. So that kind of uh, disorders is coming under the third one. And autoimmune disorders is uh, like our body, it is uh, because of the uh, signaling problem, because so our body, uh, like cell itself find some other group of cells like a threat so that this uh, uh, our body itself fight against our body so that kind of uh, situation is uh, like autoimmune disorders like for example rheumatoid arthritis and gout etc is uh, like uh, autoimmune disorders even cancer also like coming under uh, this kind of situations Okay, the, these are the four classification. This uh, another uh, one of the important system or situation which we have to understand that is that happening because of our lifestyle also. So this is the, uh, from here onwards uh, that uh, we have to, uh, it is in our hand. Because for example, is autoimmune disorders, we don't know why it is happening so it is not in our hand like uh, uh, primary immunodeficiency disorders it is not in our hand okay so such a kind of things we cannot do anything but there are so many other situations which creating the inflammatory response in our body so the immunity in no, in a, what as a uh, layman's perspective what is immunity? How we can improve the immunity is coming under this section, like in preventing the inflammatory response in our body. So I'm going to discuss in the detail. So what is inflammation? Inflammation is like a local protective response to tissue injury. That is the common perspective. Okay. So there are so many other perspectives there. Uh, this uh, normal the general definition is like, for example, you got a wound so that body will start to fight to, uh, against getting it worsen. So that uh, like blood has to be clotted and curing process has to be done and related enzymes, WBC, everything will be generated and homeostasis will be established. So that is the usual conditions. So that is the inflammation is the lo local, for example, if I got a wound, then it not curing, then it will affect the tissues and further it will slowly start to affect uh, in all the other systems. So body will prevent that. So like uh, usually, even though we are telling that it is WBC is the main uh, main factor in the uh, uh, like immunity or uh, this fighting against this microorganism, but in the signal path, our uh, like uh, neuroendocrine system, brain function is uh, largely involved taking part in the signaling mechanism. So in the condition of uh, like previously told, autoimmune disorders also, 
there's some uh, miscommunication happening this neuro uh, endocrine system which related to immunity so that is why this uh, uh, like um, uh, autoimmune disorders are happening what type of mechanism that has to be analyzed detail because it is a, a large a vast subject so uh, like when there is an inflammation the body will start to prevent getting it not getting it worsen and to establish the homeostasis the balanced state of the body so uh, because of not only the WBC uh, or lymphatic system or some other like uh, tonsils are involved that is the major organs but when it is related to our neuroendocrine system so many hormones and enzymes will be produced by this uh, endocrine different different endocrine glands to accelerate this uh, immunity or fighting against uh, this uh, antigens and it has to produce the antibody so that uh, this problem will be solved but what happens if the condition is persisting the inflammatory condition is persisting in our body then the numbers of WBC and also this uh, amount or volume of enzymes and hormones which fighting against uh, this uh, microorganisms or to establish the balanced state homeostasis in our body uh, means uh, if the inflammatory situation is persisting this amount of uh, volume of all these uh, elements will be maintained high in our body so the one of the hormone or enzymes in our body in particularly in the immunity in the inflammatory condition is uh, cytokinase so if the inflammatory situation is persist in our body then this amount of cytokinase is also uh, will be maintained in the increased level so like you know when uh, continuously we are getting summer then what will happen the drought will happen so this the everything has to be in balanced state so like that if uh, immunity the enzymes and other elements which related to immunity is in maintaining increased o'clock. level in our body then so many other complications uh, will happen so studies are showing even the insulin resistance which is the major cause of uh, type 2 diabetes is associated with increased uh, level of cytokines in our body so uh, diabetes also happening because of lack of immunity in our body and so many secondary complications are there in our body because of this diabetes so it is not like uh, allergy or asthma but it is because of this diabetes or cardiovascular diseases also happening because of lack of immunity but that is happening because of persisting condition of inflammatory response in our body okay so that is the cause so this concept we have to be uh, understand then we can uh, strategize how we can increase our immunity so uh, one of the important concept like so many uh, people they are discussing yes we have to increase our immunity okay so what is what it means increasing our immunity so increasing our immunity doesn't mean like we, we for example if uh, improving our muscular strength like we can increase the uh, muscle mass okay so, but increasing immunity doesn't mean like increasing the number of uh, WBC count it is another diseases if it is less also if it is increased both are uh, a diseased condition so the important thing is like 
we have to maintain a balanced state so what is happening uh, this uh, inflammation is persisting in our body like uh, inflammation is like for example inflammation is necessary in short term response so that it will eliminate pathogens and initiate healing for example we got a small wound then inflammation will happen that is necessary uh, so that it can be cured you know how it is once you got uh, a small wound then it will uh, little bit infection happen then it will be cured but if it is persisting then it indicates something is not normal okay so uh, if the inflammatory condition is persisting in our body because of our lifestyle okay so we will discuss further how it is happening so if it is persisting in our body and body will constantly produce this cytokines and if it is uh, have uh, like uh, because of these hormones what happening like it is like a continuously burning creating the burning mechanism in our body so that it will create so many cardiovascular disease disorders like atherosclerosis etc and one of the degenerative changes like arthritis and uh, diabetes is one of the uh, major lifestyle disorders that is happening because of the lack of immunity and other neurodegenerative disorders new degenerate changes in our brain everything happening because of the uh, immuno deficiency improper immunity so that is why to improving the immunity and understanding what is immunity right way is important and strategize how to improve the immunity so that we can prevent this lifestyle disorders okay so one of the preventive strategy is like uh, how why the inflammatory condition is happening in our body the major cause of inflammatory response in our body is like uh, when our body is producing energy then it will that time the body will generate so many toxic elements like when we are uh, like cooking something then what happens the uh, like uh, wooden when we are using wood wooden fire then it will create smokes like when we are driving uh, using fuel but it creates smoke so the, as a by products same way uh, when in the metabolic reaction in our body in the energy releasing mechanism the so many toxic elements will create uh, in our body so it is called as a reactive oxygen species okay so when it is imbalanced state body has the mechanism called so called antioxidant mechanism so when the energy releasing mechanism happening it is uh, it is called uh, related to oxidant mechanism because oxygen is the one of the major element to produce the energy so that the toxic element will be created to eliminate that to bring in the balance of the uh, minimum byproducts so that body has the another mechanism called antioxidant mechanism if the energy releasing mechanism create the cellular damage antioxidant mechanism will repair the conditions okay so this function has to be in the balanced state when this function antioxidant mechanism is decreased energy releasing mechanism and cellular damaging mechanism is increasing and when the reactive oxygen species uh, level is increased uh, then it is the condition is called oxidative stress 
so this uh, in the biochemical perspective this oxidative stress is the one of the major cause of all the inflammatory response or all the degenerative mechanisms in our body even it is one of the main principal factors in the aging mechanism also so as age increases oxidative stress will be increased but it will be in the balanced state okay so this antioxidant uh, mechanism has to be maintained properly that is one of the main strategy to bring the uh, to prevent the inflammatory response in our body okay so the another major cause like we uh, told discussed the previously i have discussed the biochemical aspect but again further from where it triggers the subtle element that is our mind so stress is the another factor the biochemical factor one is biochemical factor that is lack of antioxidant mechanism or excessive oxidative stress the another uh, thing which affect our immunity is that stress when we are stressed excessive stress it creates some kind of uh, uh, like enzyme changes or uh, this hormone changes in our body suppose when we are working in a situation where we have to constantly vigilant like for example the driving in the high traffic area constantly every day we have to drive such a kind of situation we have to be constantly vigilant so we cannot take rest so like that so many other work is there like that or so many other situations are there or if our life is um, uh, always in that kind of situation it creates stress and so many other emotional factors also they are related to stress okay so stress is also because of this stress like as i told before neuro endocrine mechanism is will be affected for example if we are vigilant constantly then what happens this uh, adrenal gland has to be pumped and related another hormones has to be pumped so it creates such a kind of situations so that also progressively create such kind of inflammation that why we are getting putting weight when we are uh, getting more stress and also stress eating that also will create problems so uh, the psychological stress of course uh, it will impact our immunity so uh, this chronic stress suppose we are continuously exposing ourselves in a stressful conditions then what happens this constantly our body has to produce so many hormones and enzymes that further create the it will uh, persist it it will persist this inflammatory changes in our body again uh, uh, that will progressively create various complications so you know so many studies are telling like how why meditation etc is helpful to prevent this um, or improve the immunity because when we are in the meditation or in the friendly situation uh, atmosphere then the cortisol will be produced in our body so that is one of the anti inflammatory hormones so instead of uh, exposing ourselves in the stressful conditions we have to like our traditional uh, ancestors uh, the ancient sages told we have to expose ourselves in the friendly situation so that the cortisol will be produced so that that is one of the major hormone which act against the inflammatory condition and it will improve the immunity improve the immunity and like also as per this ayurveda concept first it will create adhi then it will convert into vyadhi so this is the one of the important uh, factor which affect our uh, immunity so uh, what is the solutions till now we discussed what is immunity what are the complications happening uh, when because of the immuno deficiency so the primary secondary and uh, 
like autoimmune disorders it is another condition but because of uh, improper mechanisms and the and lifestyle the inflammatory conditions are persisting in our body because because of that immunity will be decreased that complication is separate okay so we have to focus particularly in this uh, second segment that is immunodeficiencies happening because of inflammatory changes in our body uh, or uh, inflammatory response in our body that has to be managed that is the primary target in our life to improve the immunity okay so uh, like how we can how we can strategize the better strategy to improve the immunity is not like increase there is no concept like that increasing the immunity okay and uh, there is no concept like that we cannot increase the immunity like immune system it should not be happened so but what is the solutions the solution is that like we have to decrease the situations like uh, our immu immunity need not be activated uh, in more level like for example in the for example a small uh, microorganisms entering in our body with minimum number of wbc count our body should be able to attack that microorganism then it is in it indicates like my immunity is good but immune increasing the wbc count then what it indicates my wbc is not like strong it need more population more strength to fight a small amount of uh, microorganisms so improving the immunity is stand for like reducing the situation of immune response so minimum without any changes our body should able to fight any microorganisms which create threats in our body so that what is the strategy we should create a homeostasis balanced state in physical aspect biochemical aspects physiological aspects and mental aspect like i told the stress is one of the major cause to decrease the immunity and environmental aspect so all the aspect we should create a balanced situation so that we can say my immunity is good okay so uh, in uh, one of the ancient text it is uh, yoga rahasya written by nathamuni okay uh, nathamuni says what are the causes of diseases he says uh like uh, deha bhedat and desha bhedat vritti bhedascha naigadha rudu bhedascha jayande roga sarvatra sangada we are getting diseases because of deha bheda deha bheda means uh, different types of physical characteristics are there some of the like according to ayurveda some of the people we are like vada predominant personality and some of we are like a pitta predominant personality some of we are like kapha predominant personality so that is um, we can uh, the nature of the body okay so deha bheda is one of the cause uh, getting diseases so uh, for example if the kapha predominant person then he will get uh, more quickly like uh, uh, inflammatory like uh, allergy asthma etc Uh, and was the predominant person he, he he there is a probability to get pain uh, etc okay so uh, such kind of uh, situation creates because of this particular physical characteristics and desha bheda because of the geographical uh, characteristics like uh, the coastal people will get some kind of disorders but those who are staying in the himalayan region they will get some kind of uh, different disorders and all, also like for example the arthritis like uh, in india etc 
it is like uh, more related to knee joint but in related to, in european countries it is more uh, common in the spine etc so uh, like that because uh, it it creates the geographical uh, it uh, influence the geographical characteristics and also the vritti bhedat like because of the uh, nature of occupations like those who are uh, working in this uh, uh, calls or like uh, heavy uh, working situations where they need more physical uh, strength and also like uh, those who are working uh, you only using the brain continue, like it professionals sitting and thinking uh, so like vritti bhedas and some of the occupation is like or constantly they have to stand some of the working situation is like constantly they have to sit okay so like that vritti bhedas and rutu uh, bhedat seasonal changes like in monsoon season we will get some kind of diseases and winter season this is will be a uh, little different and summer season it is kind of different so i like that rudu bhedat rudu bhedas cha jayande and yoga sarvatra sangada like uh, the pandemic situation the association sangha association with uh, infected people that is also uh, one of the major uh, cause of diseases and also as continuation of this nathamani says then aushadhadi prayogena na nivaraya gadasche te sarve nivajyande dridham yoganga sevaya so only medicine is not the solution to prevent all the diseases like even american heart association is uh, telling that the almost all the lifestyle disorders is cannot be cured only with medicines 80% of the lifestyle disorders cannot be managed with uh, medicine uh, we have to change the lifestyle so lifestyle disorders has to be managed with lifestyle only so that is why they are calling is lifestyle medicines so like that nathamani says te sarve nivajyande dridham yoganga sevaya so that is why uh, whatever the disease the yoga dridham yoganga the constant regular practice create an influence in our body so that we can prevent various disorders so what it indicates that yoga improves the immunity so that is why we can prevent the disorders diseases okay so like uh, there are one of the uh, beautiful concept like uh, the nowadays everybody is seeking like a curative aspect like once we got disorders then we have to uh, take medicine then uh like it has to be cured such aspect more than that the the concept is like salutogenic aspect of uh, treatment or life is like we have to think positive okay so that is why i am using like yoga therapy or yoga medicine is like salutogenic uh, medicines so it creating the positive approach positive attitude in, in our life so that that so that we can prevent uh, the diso- diseases and disorders so because when we are increasing the concept of wellness then there is no need of thinking about the diseases okay so like that if my body has the better immunity then we need not think about uh, about getting diseases so what are the uh, major factors in this uh, yoga therapy or yoga medicines some of the important concept that we can apply in our life to improve our immunity is like the yogi concept that is mitahara mitahara as per hadapadevika one of the important uh, yamas yama and that is mitahara and kriyas like one of the special feature of uh, hada, hatha yoga that is kriya too. and the uh i'm not discussing all the yama niyamas like ahimsa satya asteya brahma jatya bari all those things are there. but Im- important thing which we can adopt like as a therapeutic pers- uh, aspect therapeutic purpose that is shaucha and tapas and of course yogasanas pranayama 
meditation and relaxation so i am discussing all these things all these things how we can utilize to improve our immunity okay so uh, like um, before understanding how yoga influence our body we have to understand how it influence our body so previous uh, slide i have discussed about oxidant antioxidant mechanisms so energy releasing mechanism which creates cellular damage but it is necessary to uh, to energy like uh, uh, to produce energy fuel has to be combust so then it will create heat but as a by product there will be a, some amount of smoke but if the smoke is increasing that is unhealthy so m decrease the level of the smoke or by product that should be the strategy okay so like that in body has its own mechanism in modern biochemistry it is like antioxidant oxidant mechanisms uh, but the our in yoga it is the concept is like um, surya and chandra ida and pingala active passive mechanisms are there okay so in uh, there are not much studies done in this perspective but of course this uh, modern scientist also accepting that uh, there is a basic active and resting cycle in our body okay so for example like for one hour if our body is active then next one hour it will be like resting state okay so uh, like uh, it is more similar to energy releasing and rejuvenating mechanism it has to be balanced so constantly our body will produce energy then immediately once that happen body will act more in the activate the rejuvenating mechanisms so how we can understand that uh, like our ancient sages told like ida and pingala concept like ida is resembled resembled with surya and sorry ida is resembled with moon or represented by moon and pingala is related to surya so pingala is related to active mechanisms or uh, like uh, uh, sympathetic mechanisms but chandra is like passive or rejuvenating mechanisms and or parasympathetic mechanism so the activation and resting cycle same concept is there like barc like basic active resting cycle of our body so it is uh, uh, directly related with uh, di uh, regulated by our hypothalamus midbrain okay respiratory centers so it is like when there is a summer season then water will be evaporated then immediately the monsoon will start it will be rain okay so both are both the seasonal changes are essential for the nature same way the energy releasing or active cycle is essential same way the resting cycle also essential both has to be in the balanced state this is the balanced state of the body the major homeostasis if we are saying like homeo what is the homeostasis in yogic perspective this active and balance of the active and resting cycle but how we can identify that the wonderful concept like the nasal cycle that is our uh, left nostril is related to ida so when we are breathing uh, predominantly through left nostril then it indicates ida nadi is activated so our resting cycle is activated when our body uh, or we are uh, breathing through the right nostril predominant then it indicates our body is activated energy releasing mechanism also in surya yoga it's a wonderful concept the when it it says surya yoga says we have to do more active thing when our body we are breathing through the right nostril and we have to take passive active like a small uh, like uh, what uh, it is like a saumya karya means uh, the uh, what we can say the light things like reading and enjoying entertaining etc these are the things has to be uh, performed 
when our idanadi or when we are breathing through the left nostril like for example participating in a running competition it is uh, we are mentally ready when our breathing is shifted into right nostril because it's activation activating cycle is uh, uh, have the uh, like active cycle is activated but when our body is breathing through the left nostril then resting cycle is activated so this balance has to be there so this wonderful concept of uh, uh, surya and chandra this is the root of balancing the homeostasis our body so this is the root of improving the immunity also because this is like as i told this uh, neuroendocrine system is associated with this our immuno response if we are influencing our neuroendocrine system by regulating this surya chandra or uh, active passive mechanism or like left right nostril balanced state definitely it will influence our immunity okay the next concept is like uh, ahara okay gherenda samhita says those who are practicing uh, without midahara moderate food yoga then he will get so many diseases because uh, when we are intaking so much calories and uh, increasing the glycemic index in our body then what happens we are incre- uh, ingesting more food then uh, cal- calorie as well as this uh, glycemic index will be increased salt and sweet if always creates it will be stored particularly salt if we are eating like 10 times uh, more than what we require so what happen when we are eating like it will stored in our body so it create uh, what have water retention has to be there to manage the salt sodium content so there is a probability of inflammatory changes in our body so uh, like that is why the concept of mitahara is important as per the traditional concept how stomach uh, stomach size should be filled with solid and quarter part has to be provided with water and quarter part should be kept empty and two times in a day that is the concept of mitahara so uh, like uh, what, what is the benefit of uh, following this mitahara like when we are eating following half stomach then the uh, process which happen in our body like converting into chyme that will be enhanced so the assimilation will be more easier like in the concept of ayurveda the ama toxic element will not be produced so if we are eating full of stomach then the probability of ama creations happening so half stomach food is one of the wonderful strategy uh, to enhance the proper metabolisms and to reduce the toxic elements that happening during the metabolism and also we are eating less food what happens those who are already got so much weight because of this uh, storing the energy in our body so eating less it will helps to utilize the stored energy okay that also helpful to improve the immunity or decrease the inflammatory uh, response uh, inflammatory condition in our body and uh, the another concept like uh, tapas i to i mentioned in the first slide, pre- previous slide like uh, tapas shauja etc so uh, w- what we can say this tapas like it is coming like fasting krichra chandrayana observation of chandrayana is, is etc is coming under tapas so in our daily uh, life if once in a while if we are doing upavasa that is also coming under tapas so fasting is also wonderful solution to eliminate the toxic elements in our body and to utilize the stored energy in our body and another concept also in the vrata we usually the traditional uh, practice we not use the salty salty items uh, etc during the vrata so all these things are traditionally 
uh, we are uh, that uh, passing the information like these are the method we have to observe uh, once in a while so that it will be purified our body like in Padanjala Yoga Sutra the Sutra says Kayendriya Siddhi Ashuddhi Tavasa so purification of the body will happen if we are practicing like uh, moderate food like Mitahara and also Sattvika Hara uh, etc okay and so uh, like uh, another concept like Shaucha Shaucha is also uh, like uh, what we are maximum uh, preventing ourselves to exposed in the uh, unhygienic situations okay that is also one of the important uh, strategy to improve our immunity and kriyas like uh, uh, in uh, uh, sadashiva brahmendra shiva yoga deepika it is told yoga siddhi has to be attained be with uh, within our body our body is essential to get the yoga siddhi but what is the obstacle obstacle so many diseases are happening in our body then uh, what has to be done it has to be managed with following yoga hatha yoga particularly hatha yoga is kriyas and asanas are special features of hatha yoga okay particularly Kriya is to eliminate the kapha of the firm, excessive firm or which creating the morbidity. So it has to be eliminated. Like uh, so many kriyas are there, like dhaudi, basti, trataka, nauli, kapala, bhadi, etc. All the kriyas are particularly focusing if the excessive firm or morbidity is there, it has to be prevented or eliminated and our body will be kept in a purified state. So that is the uh, things the <coughs> another important elements is like asanas asanas are like postures different different postures are there so how asanas are Im helps to improve the immunity like the muscle is the largest organ where all the metabolic major part of the metabolic activities are happening in our muscles so asana is like a beautiful concept which directly influencing influencing entire muscular system in our body means if you are doing uh, one asana then entire biochemical reaction metabolic reactions you are enhancing okay it is not just like improving the uh, flexibility but entire because the musculoskeletal system is the largest organ that is the base of all the most of the biochemical reactions so bringing the uh, balanced state the proper condition in the musculoskeletal system that is possible majorly by doing or following asanas so it strengthens eliminate the uh, stored fat and excessive energy can be utilized by doing asanas and also when we are doing asanas of course it has to be enhanced the metabolic reactions in our body and so that the circulation has to be improved so proper circulation of the nutrients and uh, blood uh, and other enzymes etc will be in the main balanced it will be proper so that is why the yoga asana influence improves the strength and immunity of our body and of course the metabolic metabolic reaction metabolism it will be utilization of the energy and energy releasing mechanism and um, asanas are not like a rigorous uh, physical exercise it is always uh, following a moderate uh, method it is not like immediate activation and resting it is like if uh, it is like moderate manner and progressive ma ma manner so that uh, for example if we are doing constantly regular regularly asanas we will not get tired because each asanas consisting like activating cycle and resting cycle like 
uh, each vinyasa will be like activation and relaxation and each asana uh, we have to take uh, sufficient rest in this sthiti also and between the asanas also so it is not like a constant uh, giving stimulation constantly to strengthen our muscles so it is always uh, better than the r rigorous physical exercise in the uh, in the aspect of to improve the immunity and uh, the asanas also focusing to decrease the vascular rigidity when we are more flexible the uh, rigidity of the blood vessels will be decreased so when the metabolism is activated energy releasing mechanism is activated but in the yoga is mainly focusing this active and resting cycle so that this uh, uh, rejuvenation or uh, uh, like generating the energy as well as the repairing or rejuvenative mechanism will be in the balanced state so that uh, our immunity will be in the balanced state i'm uh, i have given the three pictures of the asanas like um, paschimottanasana ardhamulsendrasana and mayurasana these are the three asanas which are given the uh, hatha pradipika also and one of the beautiful concept like uh, mayurasana it, it told harati sagala rogana gulmodaradi nabhi bhavati doshanam asanam shri mayuram bahu katashana bhuktam bhasma gujyata shesham janayara janayati jatharakti jareet kalakutam so it in eliminates the toxic elements from the body and it en enhances it digest anything so and enhances uh, like uh, our metabolism so that harati sagala roga it will it will prevent all the diseases so such a kind of wonderful benefits are there when we are practicing asana so we have to understand uh, systematically how it happens so this is the uh, how, this is the way how we can utilize asana to improve the immunity the another wonderful solution is like um, pranayama like i told neuroendocrine system like and also i told this uh, nasal cycle and uh, active and resting cycle also it is called ultradian rhythm of the body okay so uh, it highly influencing our homeostasis of our body so uh, like if our managing our neuroendocrine system also not only just uh, like activating the metabolism and utilizing the energy but also we have to enhance the function of uh, nervous system as well as neuroendocrine system so to influence that pranayama is the wonderful system particularly i am uh, uh, giving more importance to uh, like nadi shuddhi pranayama like na when we are doing nadi shuddhi pranayama like inhaling through left and exhaling right inhaling right exhaling through left it is like alternative breathing techniques when we are doing like constantly then like, like this uh, uh, ida and P is in the yogic concept this ida and pingala will be balanced but in the modern concept if we are telling then it will helpful to bring in the balance of this ultra ultradian rhythm or bars like uh, active resting cycle of the body and that will influence the uh, energy releasing anti antioxidant mechanisms okay and another some of the benefits of pranayama is like uh, it will when we are doing pranayama our respiratory capacity will be enhanced so it will be uh, it helps to gas exchanging mechanism in our lungs as well as in our cellular level okay so that is one of the uh, important benefit of benefit of asanas and like endogenous antioxidant mechanism some of the antioxidant we have to provide through the food but there are so many antioxidant which our body has to convert uh, uh, generate so such kind of antioxidant mechanisms uh, is um, can be done by this uh, 
pranayama particularly nadi shuddhi pranayama also in the pranayama the high density gases and toxic gases can be eliminated and it will helps to improve the resistance of the body and uh, the another method is uh, meditation and relaxation as i told again the neuroendocrine system and stress is one of the important uh, factor to decrease the immunity so meditation is one of the solution that can be regulate our the neuroendocrine uh, mechanisms in our uh, immune systems i am discussing particularly related to immune system so there are so many other mechanisms are there simultaneously it happen okay so uh, when we are do we do meditations the wavelength of the uh, brain waves it it will be decreased so in the general state it is more the beta waves are more activated but when we are in the meditation and deep meditation it will decrease into alpha and uh, little bit theta but uh, more or less it is uh, higher level or lower level of the alpha waves to get theta level it is very we have to be very advanced in meditations uh, so but in the general meditative stage as a layman when we are practicing meditation so beta wave beta wave decreased into alpha waves so when our brain waves are uh, brain creating more alpha waves it is like again enter rejuvenating mechanism will be enhanced so many studies are there like uh, so the alpha so that is why the proper sleep is required uh, to enhance the rejuvenating mechanism because uh, the brain waves will be decreased when we are sleeping our body the most of the rejuvenating mechanism happening in our body when we are sleeping so like that when we are meditations the brain waves will be decreased and we are creating the alpha wave so that the rejuvenation will be enhanced so this is the uh, way how meditation influence our immunity okay this is uh, i one study i have conducted uh, to uh, like how antioxidant mechanisms uh, uh, happening in our body when we are doing uh, yogi practices is a combination of asana pranayama and meditation so gsh is a glutathione is one of the uh, endogenous antioxidant that has to be synthesized within our body and that is one of the important uh, like uh, uh, what factors to improve the immunity it is uh, conducted in the middle aged people and who reported uh, uh, the uh, like uh, some kind of lifestyle disorders degenerative disorders uh, arthritis diabetes and uh, as well as this uh, lumbar degenerative disorders okay so in that uh, subject group the study conducted and the and just mention only the t, t test the p value only so th there was a significant improvement so the immunity was not much active so because the subject is group is already facing some kind of immuno deficiency so yoga improved this glutathione that is uh, presented in the rbc cells so that will help to pre, uh, activate the immunity and mda as i told is a melanodialdehyde that is one of the biochemical by product of the excessive oxidative stress so it was decreased and uh, in the uh, like uh, it, 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 there was a significant improvement in the experimental group and control group did not show uh much improvement and also general antioxidant mechanism also like rejuvenating mechanism also improved in the uh, experimental group after the yoga practice so the another is like a quality of life and uh, range of lumbar flexibility that is uh, assessed those who are suffering degenerative disc disorders that is one of the degenerative disorders okay 
so uh, mainly related to antioxidant biochemical changes in the body this glutathione as well as melondialdehyde and antioxidant status there was a significant improvement in the experimental group which shows the yoga the uh, regular practice of yoga is helpful to improve the antioxidant mechanism and eliminate the toxic elements in our body and so that the degenerative the progressive degenerative changes that is happening because of the lack of immunity that can be prevented okay uh, these are the some of the references uh, which i wish to put okay and thank you thank you very much this is uh, end of the session and uh, i am uh, uh, thanking for, uh, first of all i wish to thank uh, the open attempt organization to give an opportunity to share my little knowledge with all of you and uh, i am uh, congratulating uh, the organizers and to uh, like um, conduct a such kind of uh, wonderful even a series of event to uh, like to create a general awareness about this health and wellness and thank you thank you very much thank you, thank so, you much. so much right that was a thank you presentation full of information and uh, i would suggest to anyone who has uh, who is able to begin because there's plenty of information uh, uh, so sorry sir your voice is breaking oh sorry oh, sorry okay um Okay, uh, okay, just, uh, just one, one little one question, question because it was, it was a, a very long, very long one, one and, and we took enough, enough of your of time. time. Uh, okay. uh, but, but you wrote you this wrote book this about 72, about 72 um, um, asanas. asanas. Yes, and, yes, yes. And okay. Maybe for the maybe beginners, for the beginners okay. at which asana should they start? At which asana should they start? okay so uh, we can classify uh, the asanas in like a primary level secondary level and advanced level so the intention of practicing asanas like we have to start from the beginners level and we should be able to reach in the advanced level so all the asanas we have we should be able to do but in the beginning stage we should not able to do practice all the asanas also because of our physical nature all the asanas are not suitable to our body so uh, the first concept we should have that all the asanas are not meant to uh, practice by me so uh, like for example some of the people they can do balancing asana very much easier but twisting asana uh, or which need more flexible little difficult okay such kind of situations are there so that is why uh, usually we should start like uh, tadasana trigonasana and paschimottanasana pavanamuktasana bhujangasana and shalabhasana dhanurasana these are the some of the simple asanas then slowly we can shifting uh, shift into like mayurasana and arthamal sendrasana arthabaddha patmottanasana like that so and not only that even though we are practicing if once like first one week if we are practicing we can try advanced asanas but we should not like put much stress on that like progressively we have to do that for example if we want to practice start like ekapada rajaka podasana definitely we can start but we should not expect that within one week we should be able to do that it will take six months seven months etc so very slowly progressively like how a tortoise is moving like that we should approach this yoga practice very good very so good. so just don't just don't break, break anything, anything. If, it, if it feels, feels good, good then you, then can, you do can do it, do it. Uh, <laughs> 
Very good. Thank, Thank you very you much. Very much. Um, um, sorry, sorry, everybody, for, for the issues with my with voice, voice and, and there is, there is something, something going on. on. Okay. We will be taking care of that. Um, thank you for um, watching. Thank you for being on. And uh, and uh, hope to see you at the Knowledge see Festival, see Festival 16th to 22nd, 22nd, 22nd of August. August. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for uh, all for watching this presentation and participation. Thank you very much and good night.